Bang, needs knives. I'm Jared, my lovely wife Kara should be off of work anytime now. And today we are checking out 10 knives that I really, really want to review, check out, or have, whatever, I don't know, but I'd really like to check these out. Now, I didn't want to make a big list of of course knives because there's a whole bunch of knives out there that it's of course I want to check them out. You know, of course I want to check out a Norseman. Of course I want to check out Henders and Striders, this, that, and the other. Of course, of course, of course. Well, I didn't want to make a big list of those. So I wanted to come up with a list of knives that I've kind of been eyeballing for quite some time now. And every time I see them, they catch my eye. And I really would love to check some of these out. And yeah. I, I think it's a pretty cool list, and I'm thinking about doing things like this more often. These are not budget knives by no means, so some of them aren't, like, out of this world or anything like that. You know, actually, a lot of them aren't out of this world, but I am thinking about doing another list like this of top 10 budget knives I'd love to check out. But first up, I do want to say we are doing a, a really big giveaway to our Patreons next. So if you want to be a part of our next giveaway, which is going to be an entire EDC, entire EDC, where we're going to try to make a lot of the pieces of the EDC all USA made, as many as we possibly can. And I'm talking about a Hank, a uh, uh, OC spray, uh, a couple knives, a big knife, a small knife, uh, pry bars, you know, this, all kinds of stuff. We are going to give away a massive giveaway. So if you want to be a part of that giveaway, there's only 27 people as of right now. So you have a really good chance of winning if you become one of our Patreons. You got to become a Patreon for at least $3, but you know, any support uh, helps. So if you don't want to be part of the giveaway, even just a dollar a month is really appreciated right now. But if you do, yeah, we really appreciate it. And thank you to all our Patreons that have supported us through all these crazy times. And that, you know, even if you're only here for the giveaways, cool. I mean, hey, whatever. Let's turn off the lights and let's get to this. First up is the Pena Moolah. I think this knife looks like an amazing knife. I know they make great EDC knives. I know this one's more expensive and is a little more of a reach. But... I know they have great blade geometry, most Pena's, and it really reminds me of my Tucson 223, which I really, really like. So it really reminds me of that, more of a high-end version, obviously. But it's just a knife I would absolutely love to check out. Now here's one in a little bit different micarta. This one's even sexier to me. I think this thing just looks awesome. And... It, yeah, it looks like it has amazing ergos, great blade geometry, and yeah, man, I think this thing is just an amazing knife. I would absolutely love to check one of these out. Next up is the Bestech Shodan. Now, I know you guys have seen a lot of these. And I know a lot of people have already reviewed them. I have not. To me, it looks like... A lot of people say it looks futuristic, so I guess I kind of agree. I think it looks like a tool. I think it looks like more of a futuristic tool, which raw titanium is I'm very eye-catching to me. I love knives that look like a tool. It looks like it cuts really well. I love the blade shape. Looks like it has really good ergos, and it just looks like a knife that I, I would love and enjoy to use. I'm not usually into the futuristic looking knives, but to me, it looks more tool-like than futuristic. Now, I know a lot of people would disagree with me on that. Next up, this is the Keenison Stray. Um, this anything by Keenison. Keenison makes a lot of different knives, and they this one's in three V Black Timascus Backspacer. You know they do a lot of Timascus and different exotic materials. So these, the sky is the limit with what you can do to these things, and. Yeah, I just think they look like they have great ergos, easy access to the lock bar. Look at the blade geometry. This thing looks like it has an amazing grind. It looks like something I would love to, to try out. Um, I have no idea how they are, but man, they look like something that's right up my alley. And if you look down here, you can see one right down there that looks like it's a little more dressier. They have a lot like that. I accidentally took too many pictures. Next up, here's another one. This is a um, a stonewash titanium. Looks like it has a uh, copper pivot collar. 
man, doesn't that just, that just looks like a, um, an EDC knife that would work really well. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I think it looks fantastic. All right, next up, any high-end Kubi. Now, Kubi, I've tried lots of Kubis, many, many Kubis, but I've never been to their highest tier, which is like the $250 range. I think the most expensive Kubi we've tr had is $150 or something like that. So what is different about their 150 to 250 Is it just the M390? I don't think so. I think that it's... It, it, the level goes up just like any other knife company you know when you get up to the 250 dollars range that's when it, you know it's on another level and i would love to try kubi's high-end knives here's another one this is in the 250 dollars range now you know maybe it is just about the the m390 but i don't think so i think it's a little more refined um and then here's another one this one i'm not really big on that blade shape but man, it, the handles, it just looks like a really cool knife. And I'd really like to check out what Kubi has to offer in the $250 range. I don't see a lot of people with them. And I think a lot of people get worried that, you know, a, you know, Kubi, they're not, I mean, they're known now. They're starting to get more and more, um, uh, I don't know, more and more light, you know. But yeah, not the $250 range. I don't see those too often by anybody. I'd love to check them out. All right. Now, this one I know is, and I know, I know. This is the Praetorian Slim by Medford. But I just have to say, I've been checking this thing out since it first hit the scene. Since before anybody was talking about it, I was talking about it. And I, I stand with both of my feet on that one. <laughs> a lot of people have checked it out. I have not. And I think it just looks like a really cool EDC knife made by a company that's known by making hard-use, well-built knives. Now, usually they build knives that aren't um, the most EDC-friendly. I guess that depends on your EDC and what you do for EDC, but this is definitely an EDC-friendly knife. It looks like an amazing slicer. Yeah, this thing just looks like a badass tool. Now, I'd also like to check out the Slim Midi. I know this is another, of course, my big drawback from this is the access to the lock bar. It makes no sense to me why they didn't cut out that first notch right there. Why didn't they cut that out? I don't know. But I still want to check it out. It still looks like an amazing tool to me, an amazing slicer, amazing user. I want to check one of these out so bad. All right, next up is Tough Knives. Man, this thing's called the Blovit, and it just looks so cool to me. Now, it doesn't look like it has the best blade geometry. I don't know that for sure, but I can look at the tip right there, and you see how thick the edge is on the tip. That means it has a very thick tip, and you see how it tapers down to very thin. So I'm guessing it's very thin down here, and then it slowly gets up to a really thick tip, now, in my experience, those aren't the most EDC-friendly knives all the time. They're more hard use. But regardless, I, these things always catch my eye. I think they just look really, really cool. Here's a back side shot of it. It looks really cool. Yeah, it just looks like a really cool knife. Um, I'm sure they're really expensive. I know they're really expensive. This one's discontinued. All right, next up is the Spartan Harsey. Oh, you know what? You guys can't even see it. Let me see if I can turn down the lighting. There you go. Very cool, right? Spartan Harsey. A lot of people say this thing is the, you know, amazing tool. This to me, it just, it is a knife that says tool i know it has a little bit of a recurve i'd rather not to have a recurve but just anything by spartan spartan knives are made for soldiers and to me it's just a knife that looks like it's a tough knife it looks like a knife it's not going to have the best blade geometry or anything like that but it's going to be a tool and i love it here's a whole bunch more a few more different uh versions and stuff they make them in all different ways i know these are more custom but man they look awesome and then these ones have the more it looks like they have a straighter um edge rather than a um the recurve but yeah very very cool um any spartan folding knife i would love to check out 
Okay, here is the Curtis Cruise. This thing, I've been wanting to check this thing out since the first time I laid eyes on it. I think it just looks like an all-around EDC knife. And not just an EDC knife, an amazing EDC knife. I love the blade shape. The grind obviously looks like it's a small, okay, maybe not obvious, but it's got a deep hollow ground blade. Looks like it has a very thin edge on it. Looks like it'd be a great user and cutter. The clip looks like a target. I love that. I love the oversized pivot. Man, this thing just looks sexy to me. I love it. Next up is the Curtis F3. This thing just looks like a tool to me. I don't know how, I mean, anything by Curtis Knives, I think, looks really cool. And maybe that's an of course thing to you. Of course you want to check out some Curtis Knives, of course. Yeah, of course I do. Frag pattern, love this milling, the frag pattern. I love that. It just looks so grippy and tool-like, even though it's out of titanium. Now, the lock bar does look like it's a bit of a saw blade, but I don't even care, man. I want to check one out. This one... I don't think this one has the best blade geometry or anything, but hey, I'd love to get one in hand still. Next up is the Leong Ma Zulu. This thing, look, I, I think Leong Ma knives, they, they, most of them catch my eye first off. A lot of them catch my eye. So any Leong Ma knife would be awesome. The Zulu is just one of their knives I would love to check out. Love McCard and Titanium. Love hollow ground blades. Looks like it has great ergos. It's probably an amazing flipper, an amazing user. Love the blade shape. It just seems like a knife to be cool to check out. Now, even more EDC to me, because I like tool-like, would be a little more like this one. This one is the field duty, and that's what it looks like to me. It looks like a knife that's made for field duty. I think it looks amazing. Love the blade shape. Love the grind. It has a nice tall what looks like a hollow crown blade. Um, I'd love to see it in Micarta, but either way, it looks like it has great ergos, and here's the back side of it. Look at that, man. It just looks like it's nice and fidgety, middle finger flicking action. I think it looks awesome. Um, I'd really, really, really like to check one of these guys out. Now, these are big. The, I know it doesn't look like it from this picture, but this is almost, this is a three and three quarter inch blade. So this is almost a four inch blade. This is a big knife. I like it. All right, now I got a couple more pictures of it. Next up is the Vero Engineer, Engineering's Synapse. Man, this thing, every time I see this thing, it catches my eye. You'll notice this little slot right there is not on the other side. That is, for, that is for middle finger flicking. So, very fidgety. It looks like it has great ergos, in my opinion. I, you know, I, I don't know. I haven't tried it. Um, the grind looks pretty good. It has a great sharpening choil. And, man. These, the G10 right there, my favorite version is right here, the Micarta version, if I can zoom in. I think this thing just looks absolutely amazing. Now, it has a little bit more belly than I usually like, but regardless, it looks like it has a great piercing tip. And for all I know, this swedge right here gives it a really nice, acute tip. You know, sometimes when you get a tip with a lot of belly, sometimes they're not the best piercing tips because the belly kind of prevents it. But if you can get these swedges in there and make it a little more thinner of a tip, they'll work just fine and, and usually incredibly well. So it might be that case. I don't know. I need to check one out. Next up is the Oz Machine. I <laughs> Ever since I saw one of these... I've been wanting to check one out. Now, this is, or should I say, this goes for its raw state, $500. So, I think in this configuration, I think it's about 500 bucks. And then the sky is the limit from there. You can get whatever type of materials, time ask is, blah, 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 blah. And right here, just the raw base model looks so awesome to me it looks fidgety it looks like a great user yeah it's not that big of a knife or anything like that but it looks like it would perform great nice tall flat ground blade yes 
Great ergos. The ergos look fantastic to me. I don't know about the access to the lock bar. It might be okay. I'm not sure. I can't really see that detail right there, but looks amazing. The Wii Wasabi. That is another one, man. I really want to check one of these guys out. We want for one, we does amazing blade geometry. And most people know that we does fantastic blade geometry, at least in this day and age. This one appears to do great blade geometry. I'm not sure. But this blade shape, very, very... Sorry if you guys can't see that. Um, okay, there we go. Looks like it has great blade geometry. The blade shape is really cool. Looks, it has, looks like it has pretty good access to the lock bar. Let's check out another one. Here's another one that, uh, same thing. And, and look right here. It looks like, well, let me see something. Yeah, it's the same. The access right here to with your finger to where you're going to grip it looks like this thing has great ergos. It looks like it fits fantastic in the hand, and I love the blade shape. It just looks like a very EDC usable blade shape. Love it, love it, love it. Another Wii. Oh, no, this is the back side of the Wasabi. So this is the flip side. Another Wii knife that would be really cool is the Minotaur. Um, I haven't seen too many of these. Um, maybe it's an older one. I, I'm not sure about it. It's the 801 Minotaur. I've never checked one out, but it looks like a Wii knife I would love to have or love to check out. I really, really like the way it looks. I love the blade shape. Um, it looks more like a sharpening choil than a finger choil, but I don't know. Um, it's got a, almost a three and a half inch blade, so it's not a really big knife. This is more of a medium sized knife, but I really like the colors. I love the purple accents. It looks awesome. Now, next up, the Riet Iron Frame. This thing... <laughs> Okay, let me just say really quick, because this one I'm, I'm kind of on the fence about. I'm not sure. I really want to check one out, first of all. It's very appealing to me. But in my experience, the handles that are like this sit you back a little bit. So you're going to be pushed back. But with a finger choil, it looks like it might have amazing ergos. So I would love to try one out. This might be a knife that I would absolutely love. It looks like it has a nice deep hollow ground blade, but even more than this one, which even though I think this one's aesthetically looks better than the other one, but the one with the thumb notch, thumb stud, whatever you want to call it, um, looks like it's it would be more comfortable in the hand because you don't have the flipper right there. So this is the version I would purchase if it was me and I was purchasing it. But I love the micarta with the titanium. I love the grind, the blade shape. I love the, the looks like it has great ergos um, because it doesn't look like you're going to be pushed back. It looks like you're going to be pushed forward and I like that. Next up, the Southern Grind Bad Monkey. I know everybody else has checked these out. Not me, though. This is the G10 version. And so if I was going to buy one, I would personally get the G10 version. But, man, everybody seems to like these. I don't think it has the best at blade geometry, but that's not what it's for. I think it's more of a tactical, um, you know, not, I'm not going to say hard use, but more tactical use, just a work knife. A good old boy's work knife that it's not huge or anything like that. It's just a good all-around knife, and I think it looks great. All right, the next up, this is the last one, Southern Grind's Penguin. I don't, I'm not too big on the penguin feet, but I will say, though, penguins are very durable animals. Penguins with... They go through the most horrific condition known to earth. So not even known to human, known to any animal. Penguins endure. So to me, I mean, that makes you a tough ass animal to me. So maybe it's like that. It's looking at it like that. Now, I don't think that this thing's going to have great blade geometry or anything like that. I don't know. It looks like it's pretty thick behind the hedge. But it looks like it's just a hard use knife that's built to be tough and that's what i think looks cool about it that's what i that's why i really like to check it out it looks like it has great ergos easy access to the lock bar love the blade shape yeah 
Looks like a cool knife. I'd really like to check one of these out. And there you guys go. There's my list. I love you guys. Peace.